Live on the desk, Senator Maisie Hirono. And Senator, and just seeing what is happening in Israel, do you feel like the U.S. is doing enough? We have been told that the uh, United States has given uh, whatever aid that uh, Israel has requested thus far, and the president gave uh, what has been described as the strongest statement of support. Our support uh, standing with Israel is ironclad. So every year we've been providing over $3 billion in, in aid to Israel for their defense. Uh, and over time, we have also had supplemental uh, appropriations. So we will continue to, to do that. But the whole situation is horrifying. Uh, and um, uh, it, it is very clear that, uh, that our, uh, you know, it, it's hard to talk about it because we see the horrifying images of hostages being taken and civilians dying on both sides. But uh, th there is no question that our country ha is resolved to stand with Israel and provide whatever support we can. We will continue to do that. There's no question it's a humanitarian crisis. Yeah. I guess my question for you and really the leadership in Washington is, how do you support Israel, make sure that its citizens are cared for, but don't get too involved or embroiled into the situation there? Because it, it almost looks like there's no end. That is uh, the question. How is this uh, going to resolve? But at the same time, what we've done is there is a carrier group there that involves thousands of, of, of naval um, forces and um, uh, people. So the carrier group is there to basically be a deterrent to Hezbollah and Iran and anyone else that might contemplate getting into this war because we do not want the war to spread. But we are there in force, and we are going to do everything we can to resolve this matter. But at the same time, I think first and foremost is uh, helping Israel defend itself. As far as the Armed Services Committee, do you foresee the military shifting more personnel to this region in the near future? I think that we are going to assess the situation and the needs as it arises, but as I mentioned, we were very quick to send a carrier group. That is a huge show of support and potential defense. Uh, that, that was done very quickly, and, and that's why within these situations, we are assessing on, on a regular basis to provide whatever support we can. And, and I want to make sure that even as we are um, totally ironclad in support of Israel, that we, we also need to support Ukraine. And that's what will be on the plate as I go back to Washington, D.C., and we need to get the House uh, uh, organized so that we can lend whatever support resources that we need for what is happening in Israel. Speaking of which, the battle for Speaker of the House that's happening among the GOP, how limiting is that for the entire of, entirety of Congress in dealing with these global issues right now? We can't get anything passed, anything done, unless they have a speaker. Uh, they don't have one. And so as we go through the, the 45 days, it's also ticking that we need to keep government running. Uh, there is a lot to do. And meanwhile, you have the House in complete disarray because the Republicans in the House cannot get together to do what's right for our country for a change. That's my view. <laughs> do you believe that they'll be able to come together to decide on a speaker? Because right now, the GOP... So far not. And, yeah, and they just not to, at all. Just to choose Kevin McCarthy, as we were all watching, it took 15 votes. Uh, and so the, there, there are a bit, uh, Republicans in the House who don't seem to care the chaos they are creating, but it's also clear that Steve Scalise doesn't have uh, enough votes even beyond the extremists who are, uh, held things up for McCarthy. I want to shift views because Monday the defueling of Red Hill is supposed to yes. begin. I wanted to ask you how confident you are that this plan will go forth without any disasters in our future. Uh, it is very clear that uh, safety comes first, and this, this is a milestone to begin the defueling. And just that part of the whole entire process of closing Red Hill is going to cost somewhere in the order of a billion dollars. So several billion dollars has already been put forth to, for the closure. Um, and so we are very clear that the defueling has to happen with the safety completely in, in mind and transparency of the process. So I will be there for that event. It's a long time coming, but we need to reassure the community that we are going to close Red Hill and it's going to be done safely.
On to Maui now. Uh, schools in Lahaina are planning to open on different days next week. And I know that the Army Corps of Engineers is trying to build a temporary location yes. for one of the elementary schools. Are you hopeful that they'll be able to finish it on time in January? Well, so far, they are, they are on track. I met with the Army Corps um, on Tuesday. And uh, so that is the King Kamehameha School. Uh, once they open in 2024, they are on track, as far as I know. Uh, there'll be maybe 600 students there, but at the same time, there are three other schools in Lahaina that will be opening soon. I met with all three principals, and they were getting ready to reopen their schools. That involves thousands of students coming back to school, and and the, the principals have said that their kids are very resilient, but at the same time, they understand that the, the, the kids and their families have been through a lot, and therefore, there will be need for counseling and other therapy services. And as you mentioned, with Congress kind of in disarray right now, is there any way that you can make sure that the money continues to flow to Maui for all the people who are suffering there right the now? The continuing resolution that we passed had $16 billion for FEMA. And that was critical because without that money, FEMA was down to some $2 billion. And that's not, not just for Hawaii and Maui, but for all of the disaster relief that FEMA was engaged in up to that point. And that's why it was really critical that uh, the continued resolution pass. So $16 billion is there. It will keep FEMA going till I believe, at least the end of this year. A lot facing us as a country yes. right now. So, Senator Maisie Hirota, thank you for being here. I will here. keep on plugging away, <laughs> and I just want to know everyone in Hawaii to, you know, everybody continues to stay safe, take care, be kind. All right, thank you, Senator. All right, it's now 6 11.